Hi, everybody. It is Kate here with Glazers. Welcome back to our second presentation today. And this one is super special. We are excited to bring back Tracy Page, who is a Zeiss ambassador. Um, and so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how this is going to work. But Tracy, hi, how are you doing? I know it's hot in Atlanta today. Um, hey. So stay cool if we, you can, right? <laughs> Um, can you do us a favor and just tell us a little bit about you and what you do as a photographer before we dive into what we're going to do today? Hey, everybody. I am, um, first of all, I'm coming to you from Atlanta. It is amazingly hot here right now. Um, we have our, our poor little air conditioning is cranking as fast as it can. Um, and I still, I just grabbed a hair clip and put my hair up. So I'm, I'm not as fashionable and pretty as I wanted to be, but it, it is what it is at this point. So I am a um, headshot photographer and editorial portrait photographer based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I do shoot uh, in New York and some in LA. I have clients in all markets. I primarily work with actors. I work with actors in Atlanta, Southeast, in LA, in New York. Um, I started 15 years ago doing headshots for actors. And just as the business grew, my actors got to be more successful. I started shifting into environmental portraits. Um, for their press, um, I'm shooting for, you know, magazines, basically through their publicists, through their managers, whatever they need to get their information out there. I think I had one run an image yesterday for a young actor, uh, Jacoby Swain, who is on Home Economics on ABC. And um, anybody know, what's that new new Marvel show that's on? No, the oh, other Loki. one. Oh, Loki. Huh? Loki? No, no, maybe it's not Marvel. It's, no, it's got a, something in something. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Falcon and Winter Soldier, Soldier that's oh, it. He's okay. on Falcon and Winter Soldier. So, oh, uh, I okay, come up with it eventually. <laughs> Most of the um, Marvel stuff right now is shooting in Atlanta. So um, we oh. are, Atlanta is probably the most active market right now, just because California, I don't think is fully open and we open faster. So we're probably a little busier than, um, than LA. We're definitely busier than New York. We've been busier than New York for four or five years now. Um, okay. And Toronto is the other market that kind of competes, but a lot of my talent shoots in, shoot in Toronto, they shoot in LA. You know, they're not just, I'm not limited to the Southeast. I'm shooting people all over the country. Um, so today we have a couple of missions for you and I'm going to get everybody up. Jen, come this way and Zane and Michael. Uh, yeah, just, I'm just going to introduce you. Um, so this is, um, I know I'm the hair. I'm, I was just like, this is what was rolling down my back. I had to do something. It's so hot in here. Um, so this is, um, uh, my, my dear friend, Jennifer Schottstad, who you have seen with me before, probably. Um, Jen is an actress in the Atlanta market. And are you allowed to say what you were shooting yesterday? What no. were you shooting? No. Okay. So she's under NDA. So <laughs> she was shooting yesterday and this is all so much fun. And then Zane Stevens is also, uh, Atlanta actor and Zane, what's the movie you've got that's coming? out when Christmas comes home five time and that is you are the romantic lead in the that romantic lead yeah I'm so excited for you yeah it's great so and if you guys recognize Zane he's been was it the originals or vampire, vampire diaries? diaries vampire diaries and just huge resume and lots and lots of stuff and then and, and standing in the back behind everybody come over here the oh oh this one goes <laughs> the goat this is Michael Cole who um God, I just love this man um, I'm tripping over my stool. Come forward this way just a little bit. I literally have a stool behind me and I, I'm, I'm getting stuck on it. And um, you're, are you allowed to say what you were shooting this week or is that also NDA? Uh, two of mine you can't talk about. <laughs> Sorry. So this is just the way it goes. This guy, you've probably seen him in dozens of things because he's, he's, he's here and there and he's this everywhere. Fall. Where, what were you going to see this fall in? That's what I can't tell you until it comes out. I'm sorry. <laughs> It sounds like a, like, it is, you know, I mean, it's, you're no help. Totally fair. No help. fair. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's all right. That's fine. You just know you're going to see me in the Oval, which is getting to come out. I'm, the I'm, Oval. Okay. The, with Tyler Perry. The I'm, Tyler I'm the, Perry show, The Oval. That was um, what you had to quarantine for yeah, this summer. Yeah, they're getting ready to start the second um, uh, season, and I'm opening the second season. So obviously, awesome. I called on my friends to help me, and these guys have been clients of mine for years, and dear friends for as many years as they've been clients. Oh, I love you, too. Aww. So um, That's so awesome. So I'm so fortunate everybody so you guys can take a seat we'll start with Jen so our mission today is um, the feedback that we get is that more people would like to just see how we interact with clients and customers and my camera is here and I'm obviously yeah not very good at 
camera. And, and, bef and before <laughs> I'm like, I'm we... wanting to see you over here, Kate. So, um, <laughs> so before we dive in, though, we, um, you know, that the, we would like more shooting on uh, actual shooting, actually how we work with ca customers, how we adjust them, you know, exactly what's going on. So today I'm going to be shooting with, I was going to shoot with a Lopesia, but I have decided to shoot with a bodice lens. I usually shoot with, this is my baby. This is my Zeiss Otis. I am a Zeiss ambassador. I do shoot all Zeiss. I've been shooting Zeiss for a number of years. I don't even know how many years. Um, when this lens came on the market, they sent this to me and they said, just try this out and, and see what you think. And I, I called the rep and I said, so here's the problem. You're, you're going to have to pry this out of my cold, dead hands to get it back. Um, so I still have it. So now I have, I have <laughs> two of these Zeiss Otis 100. So this is my... This is normally what I shoot headshots with. And I think that my signature look is, is truly due to Zeiss because of the way it handles micro contrast. So the, um, the lens basically, it's very sharp, but if any of you have seen Queen's Gambit, that shot with, with our lenses that do a very similar thing. Um, so it's very sharp, but the fall off is really soft. And so that has just kind of become my signature look, I think, for actors, uh, because it keeps the focus on the eyes. So when a casting director, an agent, a manager, publicist, whoever's looking, editor, when they're looking at the images, they're attracted, they feel like the eyes are communicating with them. And a lot of that has to do with the way I'm shooting it and with my lens. And then I also do a lot of my editorial work with this baby. This is a Zeiss Otis 55. And then I'm shooting with a Sony A7R4. Um, today I've got a Bodice 85 on it. Just We just thought for ease of use it would be um, much quicker just to be automatic today. And then I probably will shoot some of the images with the with the bodice 40 just to kind of pull back a little bit as we do some editorial and then of course we've got the the loxia 50 and somewhere over here this was what i planned on using was the loxia 85 but um we just decided to be more automatic today and and not leave what you're seeing to chance and then i also lately i do a lot of my editorial work with um because it just makes it really easy for me um, this is the Zeiss CX-1, and I, um, I have one in my possession. These things are hard to come by, and they're hot commodities. And I do, it's a 30, fixed 35 millimeter, and most of the editorial work that you've seen from me lately has been probably shot on this. And just to um, clarify so for everybody, kind of that's the new Zeiss camera um, that she's talking that about. That is the new Zeiss camera. Yeah, so it let's take one, one second to pause for just one second, just to mm -hmm. let folks know this is going to be a live demo. There's no presentation portion on this. Um, so that's why she's introducing all these amazing people that she's going to photograph and talking about the gear she's going to be using. So what I'd love for you guys to do who are tuning in is a couple of things. One, if you have questions, post those in the chat as always. But the next level is if you have ideas or maybe, you know, she's put the light here, but what does it look like from the other side? Like those kinds of things. Post that as well because we might try some stuff live outside of whatever the flow is that Tracy comes up with for the shoot that she's going to be doing. As you can see, she has a few people that she's going to be photographing, but this is going to this is designed to be a little bit more interactive. So please um, put those comments in the YouTube chat so that we can feed that to Tracy throughout this demo, all right? Um, I just kind of wanted to say that uh, before we get started. And real quick, just to let everybody know, there are some Zeiss specials happening this weekend only. Um, you can call the store or come in to take advantage of those offers this weekend. And it, I think, maybe potentially applies to some of the stuff she's talking about. All right, so I just wanted to chime in with that before we got too deep into the demo to let people know who are tuning in, um, what what's happening, and how to get engaged with that. All right. I'm going to put it back over to you now, Tracy. Thank you. And I know I don't even know what's on special, but I think we have um, do we have somebody in your store this weekend, too. I, I, yeah, I heard something we, about that. We actually have three people from I Zeiss in the store to today. Yeah, we have three people I in the store from the Zeiss. I am not on air. 
<laughs> I'm not the on-air talent. These people are the specialists in that. I don't know how to find my camera, so they're, they're good That's at okay. it. I'm not. So I keep trying to look at the computer where I see you guys. Um, yeah. So we're going to start with natural light. So we've got two different kind of lighting setups that we're demonstrating today. We really thought um, we'd like to show you one light source and not multiple light sources. So we decided not to um, not to go crazy with this, but to do one one light. I am shooting, uh, when I do switch the studio light, I'm gonna be shooting with a Broncolor Cirrus 800, um, which is um, just an amazing light. They sent one to me a couple of months ago to try out, and that's another thing where I was like, okay, and I'm, I'm, you can't pry my hands away from this anymore. Now I'm, I am uh, just dedicated. I'm really happy with the with the bronze color. Um, and wait, we've got a 50 inch um, octobox on this bronze color. So, a, what did you call it? Uh, did you call it a big ass octobox earlier or something like that? Yeah. Kate, I'm losing you. Yes. Um, so <laughs> yes, I totally did. With... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. I liked it. I, I was kind of like, what size is the octobox? I don't know. It's a big ass octobox. That's all we got. Um, so we're going to start with Jen by the window light. So I'm going to get you right over here. I don't know how much you guys will be able to see of this. And so I do about 95% of my work with natural light. And I do have a studio downstairs that is um, na a natural light studio. It's a daylight studio and I shoot in there. And the daylight studio, unfortunately, does not have Wi-Fi. So we were up in my upstairs studio, which um, the window light is a little harder to get to. So we're kind of shooting into a corner. But I really wanted to demonstrate it. I felt like it was very important to do that. And when we talk about headshots, we want to shoot with an 85 or um, longer lens from there. So basically what I'm trying to do is keep any distortion from happening. So when you start going down from an 85, when you start getting wider than an 85, you start distorting um, because I'm cropping in camera primarily. So I want as little distortion as possible. You know, it would be nice to shoot with a 135. I think I have one on the table or even a 200. But um, when you start shooting, when you get up to 135 and you know, longer focal length, what happens is it be you become an uncomfortable conversational link from your client. So it is hard to communicate with the client. It's hard to have that subtle communication with your client. Um, I tell jokes and stories as I'm shooting. I um, try to key in on whatever the personality of the client is. We, we talk to each other a lot. There's a lot of back and forth. It's really important to have a conversational link between me and the client so that I'm not having to shout or raise my voice. And there can be a lot of subtlety to what they're doing because this is really, there's so much nuance to an actor and their expressions. I don't really want to, um, I don't want anything to be exaggerated. I want it to be as subtle as possible. I want it to be as much a give and take in front of a film or TV camera as they would have on a set. Um, so it's, it's that real conversational length. So I don't want to be too far back. So I found for me that the perfect length is 85 to 100. Um, and I do typically shoot with a 100, but today we're going to use the 85. So that's where we're at. And when I am doing this, I'm set at um, 5.6 and I have my, uh, right now I've got my shutter speed on 160, but I'm going to change that real quick to 200. Um, I like 200 on the Sony. I'm using the A7R4, which is a 61 megapixel sensor, which is uh, shows every little detail. And one of those details it will show is shutter shake. So if I have any shake at all, any movement at all in my camera, it shows at 1160. It doesn't show at 1200. So if I were shooting my Nikon still, I would shoot everything at 1160 because I can shoot there with no shutter shake. On the Sony at the 61 megapixel sensor, I have to accommodate that a little bit. So I'm at 1200. So then I know that I'm shooting everything at pretty much 5.6 and adjusting for my light. I'm adjusting my ISO for my light. I can adjust my ISO in a pretty comfortable range. Right now, I'm probably, I'm at 3200, so I'm probably a little higher than I would be in my daylight studio. I like to keep it under 1600 if possible. 
I'm typically shooting with my ISO between 200 to 800, but right now I'm dealing with a little bit of struggling light through my one window in my studio, so it's in my upstairs space. So I, I've had to um, adjust that a little bit. And if you can see Jen, Jen, I want you to come this way slightly, this way, just a little bit more toward the reflector. Okay, and then we're using, we've got a V flat, standing V flat, and I've got it on the white side, and I'm using that as a kind of a daylight reflector on her. Pull this back just a little bit so it's not in the shot. I'm just pulling it around. I know it's going to make it really hard for you to see her, but you'll be able to see her on camera in just a second. With COVID, also, we are, get back to autofocus. There we go. I'm so used to pulling these images up on my, I hope that's a, not a pretty image, Jen. We're not going to end on that. Is that better? I have to turn around to the computer to see everything because of the direct feed. How's my light look, Wyatt? Can you just push yourself and then look in the mm -mm. Come this way just a little bit. This way. Right there. Perfect. Oh, your shoes are fine. Just make sure we're tracking your eyes. I have a stool, so you don't have to take your shoes off. See how that works? Come this way just slightly. Oh, there we go. I see the eye nose around this way just a little bit. Okay, and I typically would be a little bit closer to her. We're running on a tether cord, so we're trying not to get too, too far from the computer so that I don't unplug everything. Turn your shoulders this way just a little bit for me. Yep, just nice. But you can kind of see how we're using the light. We're bouncing it in a pretty strong way. Josh, can we move this out of the way? And I'm going to use the reflector. Okay, let's just put this down just a little. See how that looks on her. I can hear my peanut gallery whispering over here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tilt your head this way just a little. Okay. How are the sh this looks dark. Let's adjust that. I'm so not used to it coming to the computer instead of the camera. That's throwing me off a little. Tilt this way just a little bit. Josh, can we move this in a little closer? Just move it as close to her as you can. Right there. Perfect. I still know. Wyatt, how's that looking coming into the computer? Because I can't see it. Am I still a little dark? Okay. So let's let in a little bit more light. Tilt this way just a little. Chin up slightly. Chin up just a little bit more. Can you put your thumbs in? You don't have pockets. You did wear pockets. You have leggings with pockets? No, you have leggings with a waistband. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's pretty. Chin down slightly. Nice. Okay, so you'll see one of the things that I'm, I typically do is I crop really close to the top of the head, and that's just the way that you're over here now. Yeah. That's the, that's the way that I shoot um, with that really really close crop. But um, if you are shooting a corporate job, make sure you know what the qualifications are for that job. If they want to see ten percent, twenty percent, or thirty percent headroom. Sometimes your job is being clipped and you need to have the entire head for a clipping path. 
So just make sure you know how they're going to use the image and what their corporate guidelines are. Because I'm shooting actors, I can clip it a little bit. For most of my agents, most of them will trust me to do that. But some of the agents are going to want to see the whole head. So this is where it is on me just to know who I'm shooting for. So I can make sure if it's an agent that wants to see the whole head, that I am giving them the whole head. Otherwise, they're going to trust me to do my job and know what I'm doing. And, and I can clip a little bit. And it's and not going to be so much of an issue. Can you talk a little bit about your aperture? Someone's asking why not use 1.8. I know why. Uh, I have my two cents on that. But could you talk a little bit about your aperture and why you select it? Yes, because I am. Uh, I have to keep both eyes in focus. Um, so it's really incumbent on me to make sure that I hold my focus across both eyes and the bridge of the nose and as close as I am to the client. So if you know what your um, circle of confusion is, then you know that your um, focus, your depth of focus is going to change dependent on your aperture. And at 1.8, it is really hard to keep with the distance to my client. It's hard to keep both eyes in focus. I would end up with part of an eyeball or even the eyelashes in focus and no focus at all toward the back eye. So that just gives me a little bit more um, flexibility in how my image is going to be used and how it's going to look. Exactly. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's keep going. I'm just waiting again. If you guys have other questions or comments or ideas, get those posted in the chat. I'm kind of talking through some of the pieces as you're adding them in, you had a V flat, now you brought in a, a pretty tall reflector. So I'm just kind of right. sharing. Right, I love these tall reflectors. I don't think this one is manufactured anymore, but I think, I think you're right. um, Kate, I'm not sure what you guys carry at Glazers, but I think Interfit has one that's very similar and Westcott has one that's very similar. Um, we have the so, Westcott just, pieces for sure, yeah. It's just so easy up and down so I can adjust for height and then the back of this is a silver reflector. So if I want a little bit more punch, actually, Josh, why don't we go ahead and flip that around and let's just um, put the silver side. No, yeah, just take it off and flip it around. Let's just give it a little bit more punch. I knew that was going to happen. I know you just weren't quick enough. Josh is um, assisting today. He is, um, are you the director of the program at Reinhardt College? Uh, I am. He is the director of the film and TV production program at Reinhardt College in Georgia. So we'll give a shout out to his program. And then on camera today, we have uh, DP John Pruner standing behind me, waving into the air. <laughs> is that who's running the audio John there and everything? Huh? Is he running What'd the audio say? and everything? Is he running the um, audio and everything? Yes, and why okay. it is on why it is on the computer, <laughs> why it's waving at you now. <laughs> Devin, do you have your why BTS camera is, uh, set up? Hold up. He's running our OBS. <laughs> okay, awesome. And then let me while we're doing this, let's introduce Devin. Uh, Devin works here at the store. Devin hasn't turned on his behind the scenes camera yet, but here it comes. Uh, and so you can actually get a view of our setup and uh, Devin. <laughs> and many of our customers know him, but it is cool to kind of get that peek behind the scenes. Well, we also have, because like people are just walking by in the store. Right. So we're in the fishbowl so, right now. <laughs> we're in the aquarium. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Anyhow, We've all um, let's keep rolling. <laughs> the pandemic has taught us all so much about learning how to do this on the fly. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's lovely, John. See how that one pops up. Oh, that is really pretty. I love the little bit of light popping up on her shoulder. So you'll notice I'm not shooting. I normally also would probably get a little closer to the window and shoot from there, but I am I am tethered, so I'm having a little bit of a, a issue about how close I can get there. But um, I am really loving the light that's kind of like coming behind and hitting your shoulder and separating her. Tilt your head this way just a little bit. Close up the lips for me. And I'm gonna go up, because I went down.
Look, that one's gonna be a little blurred. There we go. Chin up just slightly. Tilt this way slightly. Okay, so you'll see that I keep asking her to tilt nose around this way just a little bit. Chin up slightly, tilt this way slightly. So what I'm doing is I am trying to keep her in my frame so that the, the frame, so she stays in the frame so that there's kind of a circular feel of how she's being shot. Um, that, that looks like my ISO is really too high, isn't it? Let's switch over to doing some of these with studio light. Okay, so we are set up. We wanted to show you a little bit of an editorial setup today. So we'll do some headshots and then we'll do, we'll switch over and do some, um, some more editorial images. So let's put Josh, let's put that over here. Yeah, the, the V flat right over in here. And I'll pull this off a little bit. Jen, put you on the stool. Let's see how this is going to look. I'll let you turn that on for me, sir. And where's the standing reflector? I need the standing reflector. Did we just hide it? Ha. Huh. So we're doing this with one light today. We just decided to keep it really simple. And in the real world, I shoot with one light anyway. I don't really, unless I am doing a particular image that needs a lot of light, I just like shooting with, with one light and keeping it really, really simple. Um, we're gonna need to move this slightly and move this around just a little bit. John, I'm sorry, I just messed with your light. No, no, it's fine. It's good. I think we're good with it. Let's just look at this. So um, when you are shooting with a backdrop, we just decided to kind of do this with, and I didn't make any adjustments. And is the light on now? Yes. So I totally blew that out, didn't I? Okay, let's adjust this ISO back down. Why you're gonna have to tell me how this looks since I can't see it. Did it pop up? Oh, that looks pretty good. Hey, not bad. Okay, can we bring this a little bit more this way? Yeah, feather it this way just slightly, right there. Jen, tilt your head this way just a little bit. Oh, no fire. The fire? Yes. Okay. Nope. Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. Now we're cooking with the gas. Tilt this way just a little bit. That one did not, or it did? It did not. Okay. That is odd. I'm wondering if I'm making contact if I didn't lock down my. Yeah, the test button worked that time. Tilt this way slightly. Oops, that was two. Both of fired. Yeah, both of them fired. I think I just didn't lock down the, gotcha. I, that's, that should take care of that. Oh, those are really, really pretty. Okay, so, and I am giving a little bit more headroom around it and I'm gonna close up on that now. Whoops, no I'm not because I just <laughs> undid my tether. Are you back with me now? Okay. Since I unplugged you. Can you cross this leg on top of this leg, Jen? Yes. Pull your knees back this way. Put your feet back up on the, the rung. Yeah, and lean forward and put your elbows on your knees. Tilt your head this way just a little bit. That's popping up okay? Oh man, these are just super lovely. Chin up just slightly. Okay, chin up just a little bit, right there. 
Face this way slightly. All right, let's switch out. Let's get um, Michael, you want to pop in for a couple? Yes. Where's, where's your fisherman sweater? Ah, okay. We're going to put Michael on the sweater. I know it is really warm in here. Sarah, and I'm going to swap lenses too. So I'm going to shoot a few with a um, 40, with a bodice 40. Um, just, we love this background. This is uh, just done for me by uh, David Mayhew, who's a painter up in the uh, Northeast. And he's made, I have, I think, three or four, four now, different black backgrounds that David has made for me so we can get different feels on different subjects. But just kind of a nice... Vanity Fair kind of feel on this backdrop, which is what we were going for. It also is perfect for going to black and white. I really need to stop looking at the computer and look at the camera. <laughs> John is laughing at me. But it's perfect for going to black and white. And I do shoot a lot of high contrast editorial with black and white. So this backdrop just kind of gives me that flexibility. And Michael and I really, something just went crazy. I need to um, turn off my camera. Turn that back on again. Reboot. Hmm? Yeah, something's, something's not right. Oh, it's the cap. Thank you. I couldn't hear you. He's trying to whisper to me that I had the cap on. So that, that uh, apparently I, I can't hear whispering. There we go. You did. You tried. How's that one look? It's still trying to communicate. Are we populating? All right, so while he's uh, trying to figure out populating so that we can, so you can see the shot, I am going to, Michael, turn your shoulder this way just slightly. There you go, perfect. Josh, can we use this to block the back window light? Just pull it toward, I've got too much light spilling on Michael. Can we back up? Oh, wow, that's nice. See, I didn't even know I'd taken that. I love the focal length of the 40 for editorial. This is like the, just the perfect compromise between, um, you know, just a little bit of a pullback to give me some nice wider, um, just a little bit more inclusion. I'm looking at the images as they're popping up and I know you guys can see them too. Michael, can you put both feet on this front rung for me? Josh, could you give him the stool and let put, put that under his feet? So we use this a lot when we're, we're posing people. We give them the stool. Actually, can you lift your feet for just a second, push it this, this way, forward toward me. There you go. Yeah. So I've kind of my theory is that when the feet are properly posed, the rest of the body will follow. So I want to pose his feet first to make sure he's comfortable and that his knees are in the right position and then the rest of the body will kind of follow. I'm loving the light from this brown color. I don't even have to think about it. It just does. Oh, Michael, these are gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to get a little closer on you. Chin down just slightly. Can you do a man cross, like the big cross with your, like this? Can you get, yeah, uh -huh. can, can, that's a little far, I know. And put your elbow onto your, to your knee and just kind of really lean into me. And I'm going to go down a little. Are those looking wide? Everything okay? Oh, wow. Those are gorgeous. <laughs> You're peeking. That's all right. You can peek. Um, 
Can we do a, can I pull over one of those shorter chairs for him, Josh? Let's put him in a chair. Michael, can you stand up for me? Let's get rid of the stool. Um, yeah, the wooden one right there. Let's just do that one. So one of the things you can see, our, our backdrop, I mean, we just, we hung it. We didn't really, so I, I kind of want you to, to sit kind of like that. We didn't really get fussy with it. But one of the things you can do to kind of even out your backdrop is to, um, you can see it looks a lot less wrinkled in my images than it looks when you're seeing John's images on camera. Um, so the further you pull your client off the backdrop, the less you'll see the wrinkles. So that is kind of a, a good secret. Your backdrop is gonna go into a little bit of a blur if you've got a little bit of a distance from the backdrop. If your client is really close up onto that backdrop, you're gonna see every wrinkle. But because we've dropped back a little bit, we've got some distance to our backdrop, it just kind of, the backdrop does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's not the focus. When you're too close to your backdrop and you see all the wrinkles, your backdrop becomes the focus. Just kind of want that old man in the sea kind of pose. I've been watching the Kaminsky method. <laughs> Tilt this way just a little bit. I love these. Oh, Michael, that's nice. I'm going to move the uh, reflector around a little bit. Just kind of bounce the light a slightly different way. How's that light look on that one? Oh, that's nice. I'm not very centered, but the light looks nice. Can you go back to the knee across like we did just a moment ago? Chin up slightly. Oops, I think I'm too, too tall on that. Okay, and you wanna be really careful too. You'll see me sit down a little bit on some of these, but you don't wanna to be too low because you don't wanna shoot into their crotch. You wanna make sure you're not doing that, no crotch shots. Um, so I want the focus always to be his face and not an arbitrary part of his body. So I'm, I'm very, very careful about that and making sure that I'm maintaining. Shut up just a little bit. I love those. And you wanna relax and let's put Zane in for a few. And so with Zane, what I want to do, Josh, is I want to put the black V flat in behind him. So Tracy, can I ask you a quick question? Uh huh. Yep. Um, what you got? So, well, one of the comments was uh, they're intrigued by using the 40. And my guess is you're using that wider angle for the more editorial kind of look. Would that be? It is. For headshot, I would not use the 40. For a headshot, I would use the 85 to a 100. Yeah. And then the editorial look, I want more body in here. I want more mm -hmm. options. So the 40 really kind of gives me that more environmental feeling. Yeah. And if you think about like a cover of a magazine or that kind of thing, you want to show more of the set and more of the body like you were just saying. So a slightly wider lens right. can be helpful for that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're cool. doing a lot of editorial work these days. And mm -hmm. um, I'm finding that the 35 to a 40 is just a really good um, length for editorial work because it, it allows me to be a little bit more editorial. I mean, environmental. Yeah, All exactly. All my E works are running together. All the E's. <laughs> <laughs> All my E's. I'm not processing any of my E words anymore. Now we've got Zane and I need the flap flipped the other way. No, I did say black. I just, let me, yeah. Here, just wanna fold it this way. There we go. There you go. Perfect. All right, Zane, I'm going to put you, we're going to just get this out of the way of the, the flash. We're going to use this. I love these flats. I love the black to the white reversible, and I can use the black as a backdrop. I can also use it to subtract light. I mean, just, I think that the, um, the white and the black flats just give you so much option. I mean, I can use it to reflect. I can have an instant white background. I have an instant black background and I can use it to subtract. So it just, it works for me in so many different ways. Um, one of the things I love about Zane is we just did this whole series of images for his publicity work um, where we kind of went really dark. And, and I just loved, I just love the, the whole 
way we did that. Let's just shoot one and just see. So you can kind of see that the, the black just kind of gives me that nice, there's a little bit of separation with him. And part of that, let's just, here, I just want to feather it this way slightly. Let's, let's see what that, no, actually that looks really good. I don't want to change anything. That looks amazing. Um, we, this really big Octobox from Bron Color is giving me um, just enough light to give me some separation from the background. So you can see a shoulder separating from the background. And just with the reflector, I'm not needing a lot of extra light. I'm going to move it back just slightly. Um, it is doing exactly what I need it to do. Let's try another one and see how that looks. Wow. I need my stool. Thank you. The short woman needs a stool. I do, my, my staff laughs at me, but I shoot with a stool that has these little rails on the side so that I don't fall off of it because typically I would step right off of my stool. So this is all about keeping me safe. Oops, sorry, your eyes were closed. There you go, I should have waited for you. Nose this way just a little bit. He's working it because he knows if he gets a usable image, then that's something he can have. <laughs> And we're always about those usable images. Always. always. How are these looking? We could go a little. Could you raise this about an inch, two inches maybe? Let's see if that. And let's bring it this way slightly. This, this way, they're perfect. And then, yeah, right, right there. Whoops, stop too far. Right there. I love that image of you smiling. Oh, killer. Oh, Zane, this is amazing. You're not peeking, are you? No, I can't. <laughs> hey, Josh, can we grab the stool? Let's put some, put the stool in and put some in the stool. Oh, these are nice. I love this outfit. Just push it this way just a little bit more. Can we flip this B flat? Needs to flip slightly. Just needs to come this way. I think I'm seeing some light peek through it. I just don't want to edit it. It's all about what I have to edit later on. We don't want to edit anything. I like to be home with my family. I don't like to have to spend a lot of time editing on the computer. Oh, wow. Okay, can you cross this leg? Push this leg up on the rung of the chair. Oh. Yeah. Cool shoes. Um, huh? You want to get them in? They're, they're, those are neat. <laughs> Hold on. All right, we got the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> got the shoes. Can you do the more the man cross, the wide cross? Well, maybe. Not in that pants. Maybe. Just put one leg up and one leg down. Yeah, let's do that. This way? Yeah, let's that way. Slightly, just a shift. <laughs> the shoes. I, I did. I got the shoes. I got a shot of the shoes. Nice. Yeah. You challenged me. I did it. So I'm going to go down a little. Oh, I like that. Dark and moody, Zane. Oh, good. That's what you always want to be, dark and moody. Oh, I love these. Okay, I'm gonna swap with Michael for just a couple of shots. Michael, you wanna come back? Let's do some in the same same setup. Oh, these look amazing. Yeah, I think so. Unless you wanna to go to the leather jacket. Let's just do this real quick. Yeah, it's fine. This foot up on the wrong. I'm to knee this way. There you go. What'd you say? I was just saying right in front of the camera. Oh, yeah, of course, because, you know, what did you say, actors? That's where actors go. So Michael and I have this ongoing gap, too. 
or I'll be doing something really serious with him and all of a sudden he'll try to make me laugh. <laughs> I'm trying to hold from doing that now. I know. Well, I'm surprised that you, that you haven't done it. One time he like charged the camera all of a sudden and his wife got a photo of me laughing. She was standing behind us taking images. A photo of you taking a photo of me. Photo of me taking a photo of you and photo of me breaking up laughing while taking a photo of you while you were rushing my camera. <laughs> We've been working together a long, long time. Many, many moons. Many, many moons. I start doing some of the old jokes my dad used to do, but then I have to remember what is. I keep looking at the back of my camera for images and I can't see them because they're not there politically correct anymore. My dad is no longer politically correct. My dad was never politically correct. It just was a matter of how much we cared. Oh, these are beautiful. Okay, Vanity Fair, here you come. Shut up just a little. Can you go back to that cross that you did before, the, the leg on the leg? You might have to hoist, yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, exactly. Because I want you to, I want you to kind of do hand under the chin, kind of. I don't think I go that far. Okay, well then, don't do that. <laughs> now you look like you're about to lecture me. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Oh, I did it again. Ah. The power of this person. None of us could find the jerk shots, the jerk stop today before we shot. We have searched the studio over and over. We don't know what Tracy did with the jerk, jerk stop. Jerk shot. Jerky shot. Well, that's why you Kate, want to have like you two have or three. Do you have any feedback for us? Anything in particular you want well, to see? I, well, I'm asking the audience uh, who are tuning in if they have any questions or anything you'd like to see. We have just about 10 minutes left. Um, I think it's really cool. I've been sharing with them like the gear you're using um, and the softbox and all that good stuff. I think it's just nice to see that variety of different poses and shots that you might get in a session like this to kind of cover all the bases um, for sure. So for those of you tuning in, do you have any questions before we wrap up? We have just a few minutes left with Tracy. Um, and this is our only live demo like this during PhotoFest. So like, don't be shy. Ask those questions if you have them. Devin, is there Jen, anything you, you want to see? Do you want to come in for another couple of shots? Let me put Jen in for a couple more shots. Sharon, do you have any questions? We have some live audience here. Do you have any questions? I mean, I'm, I'm just a fan of uh, Michael's stern look. Like, I know. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to be lectured. Professor. So Sharon is asking me, if I'm shooting somebody that's not a professional actor or model, how do I get all of these poses and get them to move? And the simple answer to that is you talk to them. You just have, yes. you develop a rapport with them. And sometimes, you know, with an actor, I can pretty much just put them on camera and they can turn it on. But with a, a non-actor, with a real human being, sorry guys. <laughs> um, so you get that all the time. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get them to warm up to you. So, you know, where I can get shots that are usable, the first shot out of the camera, for you it might be the 20th or 30th shot before you start getting that warmth and personality to come through. But the really important part of this is that you're talking to them and you have rapport and you have this ease between the two of you and then you see it in their eyes and you're not seeing the stress. And when I do right. see stress in clients. Um, yeah, I, before I get my shot, I find it more important to de-stress the client um, because I'm never going to get my shot if I always see the stress in their eyes. I, um, yeah. It's more important to me if I see somebody that looks like they are about to have a little bit of a meltdown or um, the stress is just going to overwhelm them, that they're not going to be able to relax. Sometimes I'll even put my camera down and yep. just start having a conversation with them. And at the point where I see them being more relaxed and they're forgetting what they're there for,
then I'll pick my camera back up and we'll resume the conversation. And then as far as getting people into the correct pose, it's just this matter of constant correctness. I studied with a man in Massachusetts, Arthur Rainville, who is just amazing. He, he's, he is my mentor. And Arthur used to tell me to always let the client pose themselves first and then correct. And I find that that's been a really valuable tool, especially with non-actors. I let them get into a position that is comfortable for them. I shoot that and then I start correcting subtly and slowly to get them into the position that I need them to be in. Um, and that just eliminates a lot of discomfort. I think if you start out them how to kind of pretzel twist them into a position from the beginning, the stress is just going to be there. They're never going to be right. comfortable. But if you right. let them pose themselves and then you just subtly start correcting the posture and moving them toward the camera, then they're going to be a lot more comfortable for the entire shot, shoot and you're going to get the shot that you need. So you, right. I was having trouble with my E words earlier. Now I'm having trouble with my S words. <laughs> Well, and I know for me, um, before I do a session with a client, I like to have a call or if possible, meet up with them and get to know them a little bit. Um, to me, a portrait session is more than just taking photos. It's a relationship, it's a friendship. You make a bond with a person you're photographing. You've talked about like the people you have with you there today are longtime friends, but it sounds like many were clients first. And you know, it's, you know, it's a very intimate thing to create portraits of somebody and being able to relate to them. If you're interested in getting into portrait photography, one thing that I love to do mm -hmm. is um, encourage you to be in front of the camera yourself um, because that's a great way to understand how it feels to be in the hot seat, as we like to say sometimes. Um, so putting yourself out there is a great way to start to understand what it feels like, and that also can help ease the conversation because you can speak from that experience. At least, you know, that's... Whenever I teach a portrait session or a portrait workshop, that's like one of the conversations is we're gonna take turns, we're all gonna do this together. Um, one person has requested, could we demo Jen having a meltdown and then you talking her back? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair answer. <laughs> Um, they but did, that was they a did, great question. Thank you. Yeah. Well, they were laughing when they asked it, but I just wanted to share for a quick laugh. So, yeah, I mean, I think that um, that's like what you said is just so valuable. So um, we're, we're building bonds and forming relationships with the people that we photograph. And there's trust that's exactly. formed. Exactly. Yeah. All right, we have just a few minutes left, everyone. Um, we'll be wrapping this up at 11.30 uh, Pacific. That's 2.30 on the East Coast. So any last questions before we do that? This is your chance, my friends. Um, while we're doing that, I'll just put that one reminder if you um, are in Santa, Seattle me, area. Let's remove the, the stool from her. And can okay. you, I want you to point your both of your toes to the softbox and spread your legs out just a little bit. Okay, step back this way just slightly and spread the forward leg to me just a little bit more, just a little bit wider. Perfect. All right. Um, we do have some Zeiss promos happening in the store. You can call to take advantage of those offers or come Put in. The hands around the back. And those are just through this weekend. So check out the website, see what's happening. Relax the hand down, don't clasp it right there. Perfect. You guys see I'm, I'm putting her hand around her back just so that it's not forward to the camera, but I still want it to be in the shot. So, so it doesn't look like she's been amputated. <laughs> yeah, it is important, important to, yeah. <laughs> don't amputate your client. Yeah, please, please don't. Represent your client as they are, right? Um, exactly. Can you yeah. just point this foot this way? You just see how that simple thing just changes her whole posture. We just opened her up. And now point it this way just a little bit more. Just and tilt your head this way slightly. Too much, too much of a tilt, just more of a correction. There you go, perfect. Tracy, would you have any on. recommendations for posing the hands in a shot like this? Um, so Jen has been, can you step forward just a little bit? Jen and I have been working on this together for a long time. So um, she knows how to pose her hands with me. But one of the things that we have always worked on, if you want to kind of show them, is, is showing the, keeping the blade 
of the hand to the camera instead of the flat part. So you don't want right. it forward or flat backwards because that's where it's going to be look larger. But she's keeping that blade and she's also keeping her fingers very loose. She's really right. good at that. And um, bending, you know, if it can, Arthur always said, if it can bend, bend it. Don't leave it stiff if it'll, if it'll bend. So you'll see in that whole position that I think Wyatt, I don't know if you've got that on the screen right now, you can see the hand is bent. You can see that there's just a lot of bent and it's not, it just isn't a very static mo moment when you get some bend to it. It just keeps that kind of stiffness and staticness out of the image as well. Yeah, I've often heard, question? yeah, totally. I've often heard that called ballet hands, right? Um, yes, softer, just that yeah, kinda, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we've been working together for what, about seven years now? Yeah. Or at least, or longer? And so we've practiced that a lot over the right. over the years. Right. Okay. Well, I think unfortunately um, we are about at that time. So I'd love to just take a moment to thank everyone there in Atlanta. I know it's hot. Um, I hope you get the opportunity to cool off and relax for the rest of your weekend. Um, we're so grateful again to have you on, Tracy. It's been really great to see. You know, a little little peek behind the camera on how this all works and how you bring it all together. So thank you to Aww. you, Tracy, Aww. and everyone thank there you in to Atlanta. Everybody so here grateful. to John and Wyatt and especially to, to Zane and Monica, come here. To Michael and Jennifer and come here. <laughs> and our makeup artist, um, Monica, makeup by Monica. I just love her. We have the whole team here, so none of this happens without. And Josh has been behind the scenes helping, assisting. So there's John. None of this happens without my whole team. <laughs> well, so we're grateful for you all. And the next time I'm out there, I'm hopefully going to make it out to Atlanta and maybe around the holidays. So if I'm able, I'd love to meet up with you in person. We'll figure that out. Um, I would love that. You're on. <laughs> all right. Um, to all of you tuning in, we're going to have a little bit of a break here. Um, be sure to check out the breakout room with Hannah Mueller. That starts at noon. Please get yourself signed up as soon as possible because I'll be sending the link out for that private Zoom session um, shortly. That's just a little Q&A with Veronica from Hannah Mueller. If you missed yesterday's, you could get this one today. Um, and then we have more. We have three more sessions this afternoon. Those will start back up at 1.30 with a uh, Fujifilm X photographer. We have Ian Jones, who's a Tamron ambassador. And then um, we have Tony Corbell in between the two. So Tony busy is day. Awesome. Tony is awesome. They are all awesome. Tony is I'm awesome. so excited. Our lineup this weekend is insane in the best of ways. And just a one more reminder, um, we did open up some spots on the evening photo walk downtown that starts at 7 p.m with me and uh, in partnership with Photo Center Northwest um, in, in support of their annual fundraiser, Chase the Light. So head to our website, glazerscamera.com, check out the PhotoFest page, sign up for those sessions if you haven't yet, and uh, we'll see everybody online around 1.30 Pacific. Thank you all. Bye.